My year started off here in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol uh, attack, whatever you want to call it, and uh, did not go inside, but that was quite interesting. Uh, and then was here for the uh, inauguration and then flew straight to the border. So flew straight to uh, within 24 hours. I was at the El Paso border with Mexico and watching the immediate influx of migrants after the inauguration. Uh, the Border Patrol was immediately being overwhelmed within the first week. And so I was down in Mexico and all across the border on the southern part, and then finally flew down to Colombia. Because Colombia, we knew that the, the Darien Gap flow was going to increase. So I flew down there with Chuck Holton and Masako here. And we flew down to Colombia, and uh, because Colombia is where they gather to go through the Darien Gap. And as you know, Darien Gap is a critical uh, funnel point. Now, how do they get to South America? And why do they go to South America? They go to South America because many of the people that want to come in cannot get visas to start off in a place like Mexico. So they start in Suriname, or they start in Brazil, or they start in Ecuador. So those are the three countries they start in. A lot of them end up in places like Chile, where they get, they live there for years. A lot of these ID cards, for instance, we pick up off the ground before they come into the United States, they, they throw them down on the ground. So they'll, they'll, they'll come to South America, and we're talking people from at least uh, 100 countries. Like I've met people from Nepal and India, and one guy I was out in the jungle on the Columbia side in, in, the, in the Darien Gap, and he looked like a Sikh up on the mountain. I said, Sikh man, you know, and he goes, how did you know? And I said, well, I've been to Punjab, because I've been to most, many of the countries where they're from. I've spent years in Asia and around the world and so, uh, and I said, how did you get here? And he came through Netherlands and, oh, planes, trains, and automobiles. And now he's out in the jungle waiting for other Sikh friends. And he said he was going to California if he makes it. So that was on the Columbia side. So they filter in many of the, especially Haitians and Cubans represent maybe 50% of the people coming through the Darien Gap. And many of those go straight to Suriname. And then they often filter through Chile. Many of the Haitians have lived in Chile for years. Uh, as you can see from their ID cards and the many interviews that we've done. And, and then they finally go to here, mostly here, a place called Nacocli. And uh, we went to Nacocli and they board boats, which we did too, and they go here, Copragana. And from here, some of them will take boats and go across, not very many, very few. Most go across right here. And, and, uh, and this is very remote. There's a, more than 60 miles of no roads. That's why they call it the Gap, right? The Darien Gap. This is the Darien Isthmus, Isthmus of Panama. And so, so it's called the Gap because there's no roads for more than 60 miles. This is some of the roughest jungle on earth. It's very biologically active, to put it lightly. That's why we have a screwworm facility up here, which is, this is where we stopped screwworm. If you know what screwworms are, if you're in, if you're in agriculture and cattle and that sort of thing, it's a, really big deal for us to stop the screw worms right here, right? And uh, so, we, so we've got a, a, a very expensive program that, uh, that drops uh, uh, flies down here that have been irradiated and are sterile that try to stop the screw worms. So this is a, a channel point for more than just migrants. It's also a biological uh, a, a choke point. Down here, we see CCP, or let's say PRC, uh, uh, China is... Uh, is denuding the jungle. You see giant trees that they're cutting down. And, uh, and you know, the yellow fever, the whole works is out there. So bottom line is huge amounts of people, maybe 100,000 this year, come through here. They go through three. The Continental Divide, by the way, goes right through. So the Continental Divide, of course, starts way up north of, of us now. And, uh, or, you know, goes up, uh, well, it's Continental Divide. And so, as you know, the Continental Divide is where all the water from one side goes to one ocean and the other side goes to the Pacific, right? And so they crossed these three little mountains up here, finally the Continental Divide, and the third mountain is called the Montaña de la Muerta, the Mountain of Death, and that's where a lot of them die. They fall or they get lost. Uh, there's many people that are stuck out there. They're stuck right now. There's always people stuck out there uh, because they can't go any further. They get hurt or whatever. And uh, for instance, uh, one man, I call him 22 days, his Cuban wife had left him as soon as Biden became president. She struck off for America and he followed her from Ecuador and he's stuck out there. He got left behind and she left him behind. She made it to Texas, by the way, and uh, left him. And he was out there dying in the jungle. And he said, you know, the mosquitoes were so bad he was using his wife's perfume 
to to you know keep him off and i was like this is like out of a movie he's like yes yes it's a bad very bad movie the black <laughs> birds were landing around me you know and my wife she left me in the jungle and uh you know the big black birds you know the ones that eat the flesh and i said yeah <laughs> there's more there's more vultures out there than i've seen in anywhere in the world and you know, I, I guess i mean there's a lot of people die out there and you know there's uh we think about 10% of the people that go through die. There's no way for us to know the true numbers because we don't know how many leave Nacocli, uh, and we don't know how many actually come out through Bajo Chiquito. But after being down there for months and interviewing just tons of people, hundreds, uh, I'm going to guess 10% die out there. And if 100,000 people came through this year, that's 10,000 people. So you can imagine how much those vultures have to eat. Uh, and, and I'm not sure if that's why the vultures are there, but it's a strange amount of vultures. But anyway, so you got a lot of people that get lost out there. They finally come through Bajo Chiquito. They evolve, they emerge out here where I met Francisco. Uh, actually, I met Francisco through uh, missionaries. Anytime I go to a place like this, I look for the missionaries. That's why we call them Christians in Action CIA. They know everything. And <laughs> missionaries... Uh, introduced me to Francisco. And so I spent a lot of time with Francisco rolling around many jungles. I was out in about 20 jungles probably, uh, or 20 uh, villages, Embera villages. Those are his people. So they, uh, in, and I was out in about 10 with, with, uh, with Francisco. And Fr Francisco took us all out to Bajo Chiquito. I've been out there six times. And so, uh, but I spent about four months out here. And so now his people, Francisco's people, are actually the ones you've heard about the Indians out there that are raping and murdering the mm -hmm. the people that come through. So the, the, the causes of death for the people that come through are usually the mountain of death or they get lost, waterborne illnesses, something else might hit them, yellow fever out there, uh, anything. There's all kinds of uh, problems and also floods. When they finally get to the river, their bodies come washing down and their tents wrapped up. I mean, flash floods are pretty intense there. And... Francisco's people, Embra people are, so when you hear about the Indians raping and robbing, that's what Francisco is trying to stop because they have so many people coming through. Some of his uh, Embra people are out there literally on horsebacks like Comanches and raping and robbing. And he wants to stop this, but it's very difficult to do, right? And so now the Panamanian authorities will tell you they can't close down uh, the the, the migration route, which is completely false because during the pandemic, they shut it off. It was finished, right? I mean, there was not even a drop coming through during the pandemic. Panama locked down like North Korea for the pandemic, right? So we know that they can shut it off, period. But interestingly, even our, you know, uh, serious people don't know much about what's going on in Panama Canal. For instance, I was telling Dave Petraeus about it. I said, I'm down in Darien. And, uh, and he said, what are you down there for? You should be up in Mexico or the Northern Triangle. I said, well, you know, if I'm here, <laughs> it's, there's a reason why I'm here. I don't waste my time. And uh, this is a, a serious, uh, uh, you know, for intelligence and every other reason in the world, this is where we need to focus assets. We can shut off probably 20% of the people coming through right here. And also the people that are going to come in and blow up a mall, they're more likely to come through here than they are through the Northern Triangle, right? This is where the people are coming in from Yemen. This is where people come in from uh, many Pakistanis and that sort of thing. I meet Bangladeshis out there. Uh, so this is it. This is, this is your choke point. And there's many ways to track them. For instance, they come through Bajo Chiquito, which is Francisco's people, right? This is very easy to shut off. And so that's why I've been down there. And... Uh, and of course, I could I could talk about this for several days, but and I know we don't have much time, so I should turn it back to you. 